podcast. <laughs> you can leave it up. We Welcome can... to the Say What <laughs> Podcast. So glad you could join us today again. We're back. We've got a lot going on this week. And uh, yeah, an awesome sermon on Sunday. We are back. Now, listen, if you just downloaded this iTunes podcast, this is Say What Podcast by The Grove. And uh, we're just two guys that kind of take a, a normal Sunday uh, sermon and then break it down on podcast. So yeah. kind of give you just, no matter where you are in your life, uh, an opportunity, whether you're a believer or a non-believer, or you're just kind of on this journey of faith, um, just to kind of talk spiritual matters. So that's who we are. That's why we exist. That's what this podcast is all about. And uh, we did. We had a, a pretty good Sunday this Sunday, mm-hmm. a pretty good sermon um, and, and kind of a an understanding and this whole series we got going on called stretched. Yeah, you've been talking about stretched and, and really being stressed and how to unpack that and how to combat that in life because uh, everybody deals with it in different ways. Yeah. Whether it's uh, little small things that just build up or just huge things in your life that you're stressed out about. Yeah, so 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 the idea was is to do a series for well, this this next week will be six weeks that we've been in this series. So do a, do a series about the fact that we all deal with stress. A lot of people. Uh, they want stress to go away. They don't want to be stressed out. So uh, the whole idea is how, how can you enter to kind of a stress-free zone, right? We have uh, vacations. We have all these different things uh, that we do to get out of stress. But stress never really goes away. So you just trade one stress for another. What, what re- in your world, people that don't know you, I, I work with you every day. You just got married, a, what, a year ago? Two years. Two, ago. sorry. Two years ago. Time flies when you're married. Mm-hmm. So two years ago, you got married. Don't have children. Nope. You've been here full time now, uh, better part of four years. Over four years. Over over four years. So I said the better part. So for <laughs> a little over four years, uh, and you just bought a house. Yeah. And Friday, <clears throat> we got out of the office. Um, actually, Thursday, we got out of the office to go play golf. I was like, dude, don't schedule anything. Thursday morning, we're going to play golf. We've been working, you know, a lot of different hours, a lot of different things. I was like, we're gonna play. Thursday morning, it's supposed to be like fall here, it's been a hot summer, a lot of rain, so we made time to go play golf, which you were certain that you were going to dominate. I you was. Know. Yeah, the time before was, that, I had a really good round, so you I did. was excited. Yeah, because you played like with your brother and your dad, and so you were bragging about it, so I was like, all right, let's hook it up, get your golf clubs, yeah. let's go. Perfect morning. Felt great. Went to the driving range first. Mm-hmm. Hit him good there. We were <laughs> so killing <laughs> And then all of a sudden, the phone starts ringing. I mean, like, from the moment we teed off. Now, we were at a place, dude. Like, if you're in podcast land right now, you, you, you're you listening to this podcast, you don't understand. We were at a place that the golf carts had speakers, USB ports, Bluetooth, GPS. and the, the GPS. They, they, they had a about a 10-inch screen inside each golf cart that we could watch whatever we wanted to while we played, listen to whatever music we wanted to while we played. We actually were playing golf while watching Tiger Woods live playing golf on the golf course, fall like conditions. Unbelievable. Should have been a great morning. It should have been. Mm -hmm. But you got stressed. I did get stressed. Yeah, because they started calling you about this house that you ended up closing on on Friday and yeah. telling you it was not going to happen and it was going to happen and it was not going to happen. So like every hole was like a different phone call from a different underwriter from a different whatever that was like, you're not going to make it. Mm-hmm. So I was pretty stressed that day. You fell apart. Yeah. Like you literally fell apart. Like you lost all your golf balls, borrowed a golf ball from me and lost it too. That same hit. Yeah. Yeah. I was struggling a little bit. You, definitely. And you know, I mean, here's the thing: was is, is you get stressed out like that? That stressed you out. You get stressed out like that a lot. Uh, no, not a lot, uh, yeah. but it happens. You know, like you know what I noticed about you? Like when you got stressed out, there was no coming back from it. No, I was done for the day. You, you, it was, was so, so over. Done, yeah. Like it was to the point where I was like, "Would you please hang the phone up? Don't answer the phone call." Like even when I was like, "Hey man, it's gonna be fine. The house is gonna work. Like don't worry." It was like we started out that morning. You were like devastated because you had to have the house. Mm-hmm. And by the turn, for those of you that don't play golf, that's like after nine holes going to the tenth. By the turn, you hated the house. Yeah, I was done with the house. Never wanted that <laughs> house ever. Yeah. Anyways, can't even believe you got in this situation. So glad that this is going to be over. We'll just start over. Yeah, you're just living your mother-in-law, father-in-law's basement for the rest of your life mm-hmm. with your dogs and your wife. <laughs> Like that was in a turn. Like that was a legit yeah, conversation. That was, that was my mindset. <laughs> <laughs> so like you had that going on, 
And then, like, hole number 12 was like, all right, all right, we're back in the game. Yeah, I was and playing were, game from 9 to 12. Yeah, I was like, good. Yeah, yeah, and, like, you were loving, you, like, on number 10, you hit a drive that was, like, it was almost where I hit a drive. Like, except further. for it was out of bounds. It was not further. <laughs> it was a further. I hit mine a long way, then you hit yours, you thought a long way, and it bounced out of bounds. Either way, it doesn't matter. Like, you were on, and uh, you were done with the house, and then, like, you, then they called, and they were like, you're back in, the, the, the seller's back on the table, the underwriters had got it worked out. And you were like, yes, yeah. love that house. Yeah, I was right. It's my dream house. Yeah, so much to do like that. <laughs> my dream house. I'm gonna raise my kids there, yeah. man. My wife loves it. We probably get paint. Yeah, hole seventeen. <laughs> yeah, it was rough. It was yeah, rough. Yeah, uh, no, I'm not done yet. <laughs> hole seventeen. Like you got the phone call on the tee box. Yeah. And I hit a shot, and then you were about to hit a shot, and and you were on the phone. It, to to the point that you talked on the phone the whole hole. Lost three balls, didn't finish the hole. I did not. Walked to the 18th tee box, downcast, just broken. <laughs> I hit and drove to my ball. And you're still just <clears throat> on the tee box. That was 17, actually. Yeah, that was 17. By the time I saw you again, the house was done. Yeah. Not going to happen. Mm-hmm. That didn't happen. <laughs> Wasted hole 18, unloaded the cart. In silence, while you're texting your wife, the, back to the basement you go, <laughs> right? Yeah. We pull out on the road, and I'm like, I'm trying to tell you, it's gonna be all right, man. Like all you did was waste a day. That was it. Like this was like the perfect fall day, play golf, and I beat you by like twenty something shots. <laughs> yeah. Like it was incredible, and um, I was like, the house is gonna come back. It's not coming back. I was like, you're still gonna get. I hate that house. <laughs> Right, I was like, yeah, you know, and then the, what do you start doing? You start doubting what God's trying to do. You're like, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe this just isn't God's plan. Yeah, yeah. Right, then that's what we do. And then we get a phone call, and we're back. While we're driving, mm-hmm. less than I'm talking, we haven't even been off the golf course side for five minutes, and the and the conversation was this: It's back on. <laughs> yep. Be at the title company at twelve thirty tomorrow. You're signing for your house. And I got the house. You didn't have another phone call the rest of the day about it. Like, it was just done. Like, all you did was waste the day, yeah. waste time, waste the golf, waste the fall-like weather, wasted Tiger Woods in your golf cart, wasted any music you wanted to hear, wasted um, one of the most beautiful mornings that we've had lately, wasted the opportunity to beat me, which was not going to happen on your best day, but even though it was probably <laughs> one of your worst days, you wasted it. And that's, that's what we have been talking about. Yeah. Is this whole thing of... Of stress, stress overwhelms you to the point where, like, you, you forget who you are. You you forget what you're doing. You don't appreciate what you got. Mm-hmm. You're so stressed, and then like five minutes after everything's over, it's like, oh, you're good. I had a phone call later that day with uh, a guy who goes to our church and one of my friends, and I was talking about all that had happened that day and how stressed I was. And he goes, "We not listen to Philip preach on Sunday? Like, have you not been paying attention?" <laughs> like, not only was it you're right, you're what, right. What he was preaching, like you were with me. <laughs> yeah, no. You know, like I'm trying to be like Mr. Miyagi out there, like <laughs> easy, and uh, it, it didn't matter because once you kind of get bent like that, once you kind of get out out of your mind, stressed, it's like it's hard to reel it back in. Yeah. And and so that's what we've been talking about is what. When we're dealing with stress in our life, it's it's impossible to rid yourself of it. But when God's stretching, you're allowing you to be stretched through stress. How do you deal with it? So we got over to Mark chapter nine this yeah. week, and it plays into what you were talking about this week, mm-hmm. big time. Just a crisis, a question, and then a doubt. And during this whole process, and there are many times in you because I was with you like all the time, but <laughs> many times where, man, I really doubted. You know, not that that God couldn't come through because I knew He could, right? Like what you talked about this Sunday, like. You, you believe that God can do those things and you believe that God can come through but then you start thinking about yourself and I screwed this up or I didn't do this or I'm not enough or I didn't get this done so it's not going to happen and it really brings that doubt into your life and it just stresses you out man. well you know I mean here, <clears throat> here's the thing is, is as we as you talk about stress you talk about belief and you talk about faith the thing about stress is stress causes you there's a statistic there's a study that, that shows you that stress actually reduces your brain function. Um, that's why sometimes if you go through a stressful situation, you don't remember it. Like you just come out. Or if you go through a stressful period of time, it's hard to remember that. Um, I know people, I know even for myself, going through stressful times, like my wife will have pictures of us 
being somewhere with the family, with the kids. And I go, when was that? And she's like, you don't remember? And I'm like, I don't, what, what were we doing? Because I was so stressed that your mind covers for you. It's a protection. So we start talking about how stress changes you, and we're talking about faith. And here's, here's one of the things that I mentioned, and this is a real dicey thing, and I don't mean for it to be, but have you ever noticed how in faith, we, believers walk in faith. That's, that's what we have. We do not have a religion. We have a faith, right? Religion is different. Now, is Christianity a religion? I get it. Yes, whatever. But what we say is that we have a faith. We have a relationship with Christ. Okay, so we we walk in faith with Christ. We we understand that. But if, and this is kind of what I threw out Sunday. You ever notice how we make excuses and exceptions and excuses for Christ in our faith? Meaning this, I believe God's going to do this. I believe this is God's will. God spoke to me and told me blah blah whatever. And then immediately on the back end of that, we already start offering an escape route for Jesus in case it's not true. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, your faith is 85% positive, and then there's a 15%. But, in case I got it wrong... It just wasn't God's will. It just wasn't okay. God's will. You know? And, and, and it's a dicey little conversation to have because... Does the Bible say that God has a perfect will? Yes. Does the Bible say that we need to be careful when you start planning ahead of time and, and all this other kind of stuff like should we be praying if God wills I'll do such and such and, and yes that's all true too but doesn't the Bible also call us and command us to have faith in Christ that's a complete sell out faith that if he doesn't come through I'm ruined mm -hmm. if he doesn't come through I'm toast not um this 85% faith. And that's really kind of where we've gotten to is because stress will cause you to doubt not only yourself, but what God's doing. Like if like if God's called you to ministry, and, God, and you feel like God's called you to ministry, and this is kind of where I was headed with that, is if you feel like God's called you to ministry, and you feel like that's your calling on life, and you get into ministry, okay, and you're a year one and it's fun, you got some guy that's got you under his wing and they're teaching you ministry and they're protecting you and you're not getting to see the daggers of, of Christian life and church <coughs> life and you're kind of protected. And year two, it's a little bit better and you're getting a little further down the road. Year three, you start realizing, man, they're not paying me as much as I thought. You know, and year three, you're starting to realize there's some mean people at this place, you know. And year four, it's so hard that you're just starting to, Maybe God didn't call me to this. I mean, I, I'm not sure if this is for me. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, now, let's just back it up because, you know, about 36 months ago, you you said 100% God yeah, had called you. Like, this is God's will for your life. And now that it's tough, you're not sure if this is God's will. Like, we're going we gonna to blame it. Who, who are we blaming it on? Like, am I blaming myself for getting it wrong? Or am I blaming Jesus for sending me mixed signals? You, just, you see what I'm saying? And see, people do it People do it all the time. They do it in marriage, right? You do it in marriage. People get married. They're gung-ho. Man, they're gung-ho. Man, I'm, i i got to marry her. It's God's will. She's my soulmate. What? He. I'm sure that's what my wife was saying. Yeah, for sure. Do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. Then at least... <laughs> At one point, yeah, yeah. right? They do. I'm not yeah, kidding. Um, but but so so you you have these plans, and we have no problem. We have no problem uh, giving God all the credit or blame on the front end that this is God's plan. But on the back end, we give ourselves just an escape route. Well. Either, either you have the faith that God's calling you to it and he'll see you through it or you don't. It's going to get tough at times. It's going to get hard. It's going to get stressful. That's not the time to doubt your faith. That's the time to buckle down and trust Jesus. You know, People want to say all the time, well, God won't put more on you than you can bear. Yes, yes, he will. He'll allow more to be put on you than you can bear because it's in the moments that you are absolutely at your wit's end you realize that you need Jesus. If you can handle everything that came into your life and God allowed you to just only be put in situations that you can bear, you wouldn't need him. There would be no reason. To, listen to this. If God allowed stuff to be put on you that you can bear, there'd be no reason to cry out to him. 
He just say, you can handle it. Yeah, you, got it. <laughs> you got that. You don't need me. You can handle that. I wouldn't put more on you than you can bear. Just straighten up, boy. Yeah. No, you get in situations that you are completely out of your comfort zone. You're completely stretched as far as you can go. You begin to doubt. You begin to you know, not understand. But those are the times that you have to dig back in and go, this is what God's called me to. This is what I know he's capable of. I know Jesus can do this and fully go in. Yeah, I think it's a culture problem, too. We're so quick to just throw in the towel and things get tough now. And in reality, if you were to dig in and keep after it and like, no, this is what God called me to do. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to write it out. And then just see how God shows up. And when he does show up, you can see how great God is and how the miracles that he's performed in your life during those situations. Yeah. But we're so quick to say, no, I'm done. This is tough. I can't do it. I'm out. Remember when you put an offer on that house, you loved it. No. <laughs> That's the view. It's unbelievable. Look at the lake. I've got this stuff. It's big. It's this, that, whatever. The moment they told you what was going to happen, I hate that. That's, <laughs> that's terrible. I should have never even went up there. You see what I'm saying? That's what your mind does. Now, we we are raising a generation. I love this church. I want to be a part of this church. This church is unbelievable. The moment that they don't serve your kind of coffee or you're, you're not serving in the leadership role in that ministry or you didn't get the, the thank you card or they didn't come by the hospital, man, I never did like that church. I'm going to find a new church home. I mean, yeah. What are you talking about? You know, oh, man, I love that guy, dude. He's my guy. He's my dude, right? And then you screw up, which is part of life. You're a human being. Sometimes it's really bad. Sometimes it's not so bad. Man, dude, he's always sketch. Always need to do something stupid, and they leave. But we do that to Jesus, and so we have faith until we get kind of stressed out, and then we don't. We don't know. We kind of get this dual understanding. My heart says anything's possible with Jesus. My mind says, I've never seen him do that. My heart says God can do all things. My mind says, oh, uh, maybe he can. Maybe he won't. Right? Yeah. I want to believe that he can, but just in case he's not going to do it, you know, if it's God's will. Yeah, we're, it's easy to pour in other people's lives when they're going through hard times. Like, you got this. Just stick through it. But when, it, when it's happening in your own life, when you're, you're struggling with it, Man, it's, it's, there's no joy like it when you stick through it and you stick in it and say, no, this is what God called me to do. And thinking back, a lot of times you got to think back to, to why you were called, you know, or, or why you felt like God was calling you to do this in the beginning instead of just focusing on the hard time and what the, the, the stress that you're in in that particular moment. So, so one guy said it this way. He said, if, you're, if your greatest days are behind you or if you find yourself always looking back, as opposed to forward, then you're going in the wrong direction, right? If, you're, if, you, if your memories are greater than your dreams and you're headed in the wrong direction. And I believe that with all my heart, but I do believe this too, that occasionally in order to see your dreams realized, you have to look back just to see how far God's brought you to remember that what you're going through now, he'll get you through that too, yeah. you know? And so every now and then you have to just sit down and go, man, I'm stressed here, but look, I'm stressed there too. God got me through this. I got to get me through this. And so this is where we've been, and and this is what we're talking about. So we start talking about faith. We start talking about the crisis, the question, and the doubt. And uh, we were in Mark chapter nine this week. Yeah. So Mark chapter nine is talking about the the disciples couldn't drive out the demon that this guy's son had. He was having seizures. Seizures were throwing him in the fire. Demons throwing him in the fire and the water, trying to drown him, trying to kill him. And he's been trying to get the disciples to get him out, but he couldn't. And so then he had to be Jesus. You just said that like emphatically, like you could. I could. <laughs> they couldn't get it out. Um, they wrestled around with that guy. I don't know what that looked like, but but this guy was just trying to get somebody to help him. And there was no help to be found. So what we talked about initially was the stress part, the crisis. People, right. This man was in a crisis. His son is dealing with this demon. And so we got to set that up, kind of ask the question, what crisis are you going through? Now, some people may not be going through a crisis right now. And I believe it was Adrian Rogers that used to say, you're either headed to a storm, in a storm, or just came out of a storm. So if you hear like a message or a podcast or whatever, and you go, I'm not in a crisis right now, here's what you want to say. Well, is it because you're headed towards one, or is it because you just came out of one? But I can most assuredly tell you this. You're going to be in one. At some point. Yeah. You know, and there may be years between them, but, but it happens. Storms come. So when you understand this crisis this man has, what we do know is this man was just trying to get some help. And so he finally finds Jesus. He has some kind of demonic 
a spirit about him. It muted him, throws him in convulsions. You know, he, he's, he's grinding his teeth, he's stiffened out, he's foaming at the mouth. The disciples were like, man, I, I don't know. And we tried, but that thing won't come out. Jesus asked him how long it's been going on. The guy said it's been going on since childhood. Um, and then um, he, he has a fit in front of Jesus. And um, then the, he begins to enter into a conversation with the father of this boy. And this was the question part. This is what we talk about. We said, um, you know, the Bible says in Mark chapter 9, verse 22, he says, but if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us, right? And so we talked about the question. So the crisis was he had this demon-possessed boy. The question was, help us. Can you help us? But then he said, but if you can, right? And so we talked about on Sunday the fact that the question really was, is will you offer pity to us, which was, will you be moved by the way I feel about this? Will you show feel the way, us. yeah, and help me show pity, you know, align yourself with me and understand that I'm dealing with this to help me. And um, and so he asked you that, but the real question was, but if you can. Yeah. I love Jesus' response. You talked about it on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so so then the next thing he says, but if you can do anything, the man says, uh, have p- or take pity on us and help us. And without missing the beat, Jesus just says, if you can. <laughs> <laughs> like you, <clears throat> like you, you can see him saying, like you could, you could almost, you can almost hear Jesus responding. I, I mean, I'm kind of wondering, can. Is he saying it sarcastically? Is he saying it kind of hurt? Is he saying it like, um, you know, I mean, she'll say, is, he like, is it like, you talking to me? You know, kind of mentality. He's like, if you can, like, or what do you mean if I can? Like, what? You know, I, mean, I can see it a thousand different ways. The crazy part about this, this is what I'm trying to explain on Sunday. He's already found Jesus. He's talking to Jesus. And then the son has a major seizure fit with a demon-possessed, uh, being demon-possessed. He's thrown down. This kid's having this thing between Jesus and the father. Jesus asks him how long it's been going on. They're talking while this kid's having this fit. Jesus ain't touching him, ain't doing anything. The crowd's gathering around them, watching this kid have this uh, demon-possessed convulsion on the ground, Neither one of them even look at the kid. Jesus just says, how long has this been going on? <laughs> Which is kind of weird that he would even ask that question, but he's setting the parameters of time. The man comes back and says, childhood, and by the way, if you can, please take pity on us and help us. And Jesus, I mean, they're still like, look, the kids, kids at their feet. The kids, like, struck out. It's all happening. And Jesus goes, if I can. Like, and then he follows that up and he says, but if I can, it, it, all things are possible to him who believes. And he kind of flips it right back at him. And he says, if I can. Let me tell you something. I'm telling you right now, all things are possible for the man that believes. I'm telling you right now that what's between us, this your boy, I'm telling you healing is on its way for those who believe. And Jesus, no matter what you've heard up to this point in this podcast on me trying to push people to believe, to not be double-minded, Jesus takes it a step further. Jesus is more over the top than I ever could be. Like, I can't overemphasize Jesus here. He says, all things are possible for the person that believes. And the understanding of belief is belief, right? You need to believe it. I heard a guy break it down, belief, one time, and he broke it down into two words, be life or be live. And then he switched it around and he said, belief is simply to live by. So when you say that you believe in something, you're living by it. And Jesus is saying, it is possible anything for those that live by this, that have this faith. And that's really kind of where we got to. Do you really believe? Yeah. As you were preaching on Sunday, in my mind where I went to is, he's talking about having that 100% belief, but no doubt, not being double-minded saying that I know that Jesus can get me through this moment. And in this moment right here, this, this dad is having a crisis, right? He's going through all this because son, he would do anything for his son to get him the dem- demonic presence out, right? Mm-hmm. To, to heal his son. And in this moment, 
he's still unsure, right? The disciples can't get it done. He's at Jesus. And no one can get it done. Yeah, no one can get it done. And Jesus says, if I believe, anything's possible for those who believe. And in that moment, he's like, I, I believe. Like, I, I'm in, <laughs> right? Because he, he wants it so bad. So Jesus and this man are having this conversation, and he comes back, and he comes in... in and after Jesus says that, the Bible says, he said, the Bible says, Jesus says, if I can, or if you can, anything is possible for him who believes. And immediately the boy's father cries out and he sh- plays his hand. And I said it on Sunday and I believe this to be true. I think that in this moment, Jesus is actually more interested in having a conversation about this, with this man. He's already determined he's going to fix this boy. That's not even a question. He don't bend down and touch a kid. He just asks kid, he just asks that how long it's been going on. Just, just go ahead and set the bar real high because it's been going on your whole life. I understand. But he's interested in building this daddy's faith. That's what he's interested in. He's interested in taking this dad to the next level in his belief system, right? And the dad has just been turned down, couldn't get fixed, couldn't do whatever. And so that's when he comes back and says, anything's possible for him who believes. And the Bible says that immediately the boy's dad cries out. He's crying out. You can, Now you see the pain, the anguish, the, the hurting in his soul coming forward towards Jesus. And he fires right back to him, and he's as honest, and he's as human, he's as me and you, and anybody listening to this podcast can ever be, and he says, I believe, I believe, help my unbelief. And that's where we live. My heart believes, my heart believes Jesus can do it. Oh, you got cancer? My heart believes that Jesus can heal Oh, oh, you, you, you want you, you and your wife want to start a family in that house? You believe in your heart. This is the home God has for you. You can see your kids being raised there. I believe, right? Oh, you feel like you're called to ministry? You believe in your heart that God has called you. But then all of a sudden, the cancer is stage four and it's spreading. So your heart says, I believe God's going to heal you. And your mind says... Do you know anybody that's ever been healed from this type of cancer? See, that's the unbelief. Or you go and you go, I believe God wants me to have this house. And your mind goes, uh, did you hear him say that the deal was off? Or you say, you know, I believe God's called me to ministry. Really? You think you can live your whole life being beat up by Christians? You see, what, see what's happening? And so God pushes on this guy, and this guy so really said, I believe, help my unbelief. And what he's saying is, he's saying, I'm trying to believe in everything, but I'm struggling here too. There's times that I doubt. And I really believe that Jesus is about to say something back to him. I really believe that Jesus is going to go right back at him um, and, and help him. But the Bible says, verse 25, it says, When Jesus saw that a crowd was rapidly gathering, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You deaf and mute spirit, I command you to come out of him and do not enter him again. So like Jesus and this man's going back and forth. This man has this moment. I believe, help my unbelief. And then all of a sudden, rapidly, the Bible says that these, these crowds begin to approach. And Jesus just flips gears, fix the boy, and then raises him up, and they move on. And then the, the disciples pull him aside at the end, and they go, why couldn't we do that? Is what they say. And then Jesus said, well, because this time, this kind cannot come out without prayer. You know, and he really kind of tells the rest of the story about the man to the disciples, which is this: if you're going to have that type of belief with your whole heart, not be believing one thing in your heart and another thing in your mind, the only way to to fix that is by talking to the Father through prayer, like dedicated to talking to Him, right? Um, I think sometimes we approach prayer as if it's our job to move God. I gotta move him. I've gotta cry enough tears. I gotta say enough words. I need to move him. But you know, I think what we find out about prayer is, is it's not so much about moving God as it is Him correcting us and working in our life and moving our hearts and mind to join Him. Yeah, I think you said this in your message that uh, that's where we are at, right? I do believe, but help my unbelief. Yeah. And that statement's powerful because, like what you said, trying to move God, like we're trying to, we want to take that next step, but we're waiting for God to make it happen. Right. 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 And in our reality, like, God's there. God's waiting on us to take yeah. that step. That's where our mind comes in, our unbelief comes in, that 
I might fall if I take this next step. I might not make it if I if I take that extra step or whatever it may be. Yeah. And and God's already there, man. Yeah. We believe that that's what He's called us to do, but our unbelief, our mind comes in and tells us hey, it's not that, it's not ready yet, it's not time yet, or we can't do that yet. Yeah. But, I think that's the thing is 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 there in the whole conversation between the man and Jesus about the son. Not one time did the man have to jump through hoops or talk Jesus into working in his son's life. Not once. Not one time. Jesus wanted to know how long it was going on. That's all he wanted to know. And the man wanted pity from Jesus. Jesus didn't even answer that part. Jesus just says, you ask him if I can. <laughs> if I can. Uh, yes, I can. Do you believe? That's really what he says. Mm-hmm. Yes, I can. Do you believe I can? So that's it. And the question that we have for folks this week on our podcast is, do you believe? Like, do you believe? Like, you're praying, if you can, if you can, if you can. That's why I kept saying, this is where we live our life. Jesus, if you can. And Jesus is from heaven going, yep, can. Not a question. I can. The question is, do you believe I can? So that's what we live with folks today. And so this week we'll continue on with this whole, whole study of being stretched. And so I would challenge people, whatever it is that you're praying through right now, the question isn't, can God do it? The question isn't, is it possible for God? The question is, do you believe that it can? Awesome. It's going to be gonna a good, be good Sunday. Yeah, man. It's going to be a good night tonight. Uh, man, if you're first time listening to this podcast, make sure you hit subscribe and share this with your friends. Yep. If you're watching on YouTube, share this clip. And if you're on the podcast today and somebody shared it with you and you subscribe to it, please, as we upload um, more podcasts. But here's another thing that you can do. You can go to ilovemygrub.com and check us out um, and listen to all of our messages, not just our podcast, but our messages. And then you can also go to our YouTube page or say what podcast on YouTube and see see us doing this live uh, and in person. So appreciate the listen. Pass it on. Rate us five stars, if you will, and uh, get other people to sign up for our podcast. Absolutely. Y'all have a great rest of the week. Say one podcast.